One of the most tired dunks from people criticising modern pop culture is that, despite its name being a constrained portmanteau of music and television, MTV no longer plays any music. An observation that's only really worth noting because MTV literally used to play nothing but music videos. So I haven't kept up with where MTV are now, but mm-hmm. I remember just when I was younger, MTV was the shit. Yes, um, the MTV basically helped define um, the 80s and the 90s, and it was the one-stop shop to see music videos from um, all your favourite white people, um, which is not me um, being facetious. That is an observation that was made by none other than David fucking Bowie, who eviscerated an MTV presenter live on air during an interview by asking them quite simply, why don't you play any music videos by black people? And if anyone out there has a taste for just some real top tier cringe and wants to see like some God level trolling from David Bowie, go watch that interview because it is incredible. One of my favorite highlights is when the MTV interviewer, in defense of not showing videos featuring black people, says that they had a letter of complaint from a fan and David Bowie just without missing a beat goes, well, that's his problem. This this kid just ranted about what he didn't want to see on MTV. Well, that's his problem. In no uncertain terms, well. Like he completely just destroys everything the guy is saying. And the best bit is as well, because he's so British, the guy doesn't even realize how hard he's been dunked on. Because I think the most yeah. the most withering statement in the entire thing is when the guy gives this really awful like defense of why they don't play music videos by black artists. David Bowie just goes, I understand your point of view. Makes sense, valid point. I understand your point of view. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And it's one of those things that British people just excel at. And it is the understated insult, which probably sounds a bit weird coming from me because I'm like, no, loud, brash, and northern. But it's like, uh, the best way to sum it up is um, if a British person ever ends an email with regards, uh, it might as well say, fuck you. It's like when you get a message that says, to whom it may concern. It's like, oh, that's, you know you don't fuck up when you get an email saying that. Anyway, to bring it back to the Colgate White origins of MTV, we have to go all the way back to 1981. So what happened in 1981? Well, that is when MTV launched, and it very famously had a relatively muted launch, like, you know, for something so massive today, um, with only several thousand people even being able to access MTV at the time, because it only aired in certain parts of New Jersey. So there are only a handful of people on Earth who actually watched the very first broadcast by MTV, and they are all from the same geographic location um, in the same city of the United States. And... Um, Lucas, um, like, you know, the pub quiz aficionados are already t- furiously typing this in the comments, but do you happen to know what the first music video aired on MTV was after um, the now iconic image of the spaceman holding the MTV flag? I, I, honestly, I'm drawing a blank. Video killed the radio star. Oh, fucking course it was, yeah. Yeah, very apt. And that's the thing that I guarantee you people are already typing in the comments of, did you know? Yes. Yes, I did. And I also know the second video they played, which was Pat Benatar's You Better Run, um, which was followed by just a brief glimpse into the unending void, which became a familiar, if frustrating quirk of watching early MTV for people at home. So when you say, like, the the infinite void of darkness, you you just mean a black screen, right? Yeah, there'd just be, like, a few seconds, in some cases, like, upwards of, like, 30 seconds, even a minute of just complete blackness before the next video would play. And for many people watching MTV in its early days, that was just like a frustrating quirk of watching the channel. And it turns out that in its very earliest days, MTV was pretty much just a series of VHS players into which um, an intern would put tapes, which had the music video on them. And that was connected to a screen, which would then be broadcasted um, out to the people watching at home. So in its earliest days, MTV literally showed nothing but music videos. And I presume, like, the black in between the music videos was just somebody getting another VHS taken yeah. out and being, like, swapping them around. And most of the time, they were able to switch quite seamlessly between music videos. But sometimes, like, the person putting the tapes into the VHS player didn't know how long the song was or when, like, the video actually entered. Because it was new. They'd only just got it. Which meant that sometimes they'd just, like, panning, oh, God, there's nothing, I'll put something else in now. And they'd just be, like, you know, cut to black. <laughs> for, like, you know, what must have felt like an eternity for people watching at home. And that, to me, is so funny. Uh, and it reminds me a little bit of a story we've already covered on the channel, so I'll only cover it briefly here. And it was um, Howard Hughes um, uh, bought a 
television station because he just wanted to watch TV at night and no television station in the area he was living at the time, um, Las Vegas, um, showed anything past midnight. So he bought a TV station and just made it air shows all hours of the day and would sometimes call up the studio if he didn't like what was on and tell them to put something else on. <laughs> Uh, but keep in mind, this was a TV station anyone in Las Vegas could watch. So sometimes people watching at home would just see the screen cut to black and then something else would start playing, or it would be rewound for a few seconds if Howard Hughes missed it or wanted to watch a bit again. And MTV eventually realised that they couldn't just keep cutting to black because it just looked really unprofessional. So they hired uh, what would eventually become known as video jockeys, uh, which were essentially just DJs that would introduce the next song. And that, for me, is the moment that the idea started to turn bad because the instant they started putting personalities on the air, it's like, I'm done. And keep in mind as well, in the early days of MTV, some of the people like presenting these songs were the same dude we mentioned earlier, who was just offering like a defense of fucking racism. <laughs> Why would I want this shithead on my screen? Where were they getting these tapes from then? Uh, well, here's the thing, Lucas, and this is gonna be really, really weird to hear considering the current state of the music industry. Um, like, for example, like, we in this video would have loved to put many clips from our favourite music videos um, to share them with the audience. Um, like, you know, maybe introduce people to some new music or just like, you know, just share an interest that we have um, with you, our audience at home. And we can't do that because the music industry is fucking horrendous for that sort of thing. Like, we would get immediately copyright struck on this video and we'll make no money from it. In the earliest days of MTV, record companies provided them with those music videos free of charge as they recognised uh, the nascent music channel industry as a great tool for advertisement and saw collaboration between them both as being mutually beneficial. Just think about that for a moment. Doesn't that sound like a good way to do business? It, it almost sounds alien, doesn't it, to think about? Like, it's, I, for me, as someone who works in, like, you know, this industry, like, it sounds almost incomprehensible. Like, it, is, it is not at all representative of the industry I've had to deal with, with like, you know, how petty and protective it is over, like, you know, its property, which, you know, we should clarify, is made by other people. Like, like the intellectual property of other people that they own because they bought it or they funded it or what have you. Like, like we have had on multiple occasions entire like 15, 20 minute long videos uh, completely demonetized with all the money going to a massive record company for using like five seconds of a song. And when I was researching this article and stumbled across that fact, I was just baffled. I couldn't believe it. I was like, that doesn't sound like the record industry today, giving stuff away for free because they recognize it as a good advertising tool. They, they, they acknowledge that you know, collaboration between the two industries is mutually beneficial for them both. They see value in letting people use their intellectual property because it's like, you know, a great advertisement tool. And at the end of the day, if they want to get the thing, they'll go out and buy a record with it on. That does not sound like anything we've got today where it's just, oh yeah, three seconds of that. That's ours. We own you now. And I just thought that was very interesting. 